Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our showing of Casablanca, 1942, the third selection in our Hollywood's Greatest Hero miniseries, directed by Michael Curtis and starring Humphrey Bogart as our third hero, Rick Blaine, Ingrid Bergman, and Claude Rains. Paul Henry played Bergman's husband, Victor Laszlo. The screenplay was adopted by twin brothers Julius and Philip Epstein and Howard Koch from an unproduced stage play, Everyone Comes to Rick's by Murray Burnett and Joan Allison. The original play was inspired by Burnett's trip to Vienna following the Anschluss, where he was appalled by rampant anti-Semitism. Traveling further in the south of France, he visited the nightclub favored by exiles and refugees with a performer who became the prototype of Sam the Piano Man. Many European refugees and exiles were cast in minor roles or as extras in the film, including Henry, Peter Lorre, and Conrad Veidt. Of the 97 uncredited extras, 71 were foreign-born and many were Jewish. The music was composed by Max Steiner. The song, As Time Goes By, was a part of the original play, so Steiner based the entire score on it and on the Marseillaise, using them as light motifs to reflect changing moods. In the dueling anthems scene, the piece opposing the Marseillaise was to have been the horse vessel lead, but it was still under international copyright, so they used Die Wacht am Rhein instead. The Deutschland lead, is used several times in minor mode as a light motif for the German threat, i.e., in the scene where it is announced that the German army will reach Paris the next day. It also appears in the final scene, giving way to the Marseillaise when Strasser is shot. Other songs in the score include It Had to Be You, The Very Thought of You, and Knock on Wood. Casablanca was filmed entirely at Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, California, with the exception of one scene filmed at Van Nuys Airport. Rick's Cafe was one of only a few original sets built for the film. The rest were recycled from other Warner Brothers productions because of wartime restrictions on building materials. They rushed the film into release in November 1942 to take advantage of publicity resulting from the Allied invasion of North Africa shortly before. In 1953, Warner Brothers released a heavily edited version of Casablanca for use in West Germany with all scenes of Nazis and most references to World War II removed and important plot points altered, i.e., Victor Vlaslo was no longer a resistance fighter who escaped from a Nazi prison camp, but a Norwegian atomic physicist pursued by Interpol after he broke out of jail. A German version with the original story was not released until 1975. The film was a solid financial success, earning about $6 million on an investment of $880,000. It won Oscars for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Adopted Screenplay. Casablanca's amazing characters haunting theme song and memorable lines have all become iconic. So it ranks at or near the top of many greatest film lists. Roger Ebert called Bergman's performance luminous and commented that she paints his, Bogart's face, with her eyes. Bosley Crowther of the New York Times wrote, the Warners have a picture which makes the spine tingle and the heart take a leap. In 1955, the Brattle Theater in Cambridge, Massachusetts showed it as part of a season of old movies. It was so popular that a tradition started to show it during Harvard's final exam week that continues to the present day. This helped Casablanca remain popular while other 1940s films faded from memory. By 1977, it had become the most frequently broadcast film on American TV. The film influenced many later works, including Passage to Marseille, 1944, To Have and Have Not, 1944, and Play It Again, Sam, 1972. 
1989, it was one of the first 25 films selected for the National Film Registry, and many critics consider its screenplay the finest ever written. Plot summary, it's 1942, and Rick Blaine, a cynical expat who lives in Casablanca, runs a cafe which is a haven for refugees fleeing from Nazi-controlled Europe. They wish to obtain letters of transit which will allow them to emigrate from Vichy, France to the US, right under the noses of the Nazi officers who frequent the cafe. When Rick's older lover, old lover, Ilsa Lund, and her husband, Victor Laszlo, a resistance fighter and recent escapee from a Nazi prison camp, arrive to seek their papers, Rick is faced with a serious dilemma, whether to help them in their desperate effort to flee to safety or turn them in. Four fact, fun facts about the film. Henry considered Bogey a mediocre actor, and Bogart thought Henry was a prima donna. Conrad Veidt, who played Strasser, was a refugee German actor with a Jewish wife and the highest paid actor in the film, even though he received only second billing. Julie Wilson, Sam the Piano Man, was actually a drummer and had to pretend to play the piano. His pieces were dubbed by Gene Plummer. A witness observing the filming of the dueling anthem scene saw many of the actors crying and realized that some were actually Jewish refugees from Nazism. This scene is an adaptation of a similar one in Jean Renoir's The Grand Illusion, 1937. The background of the last scene showing a Lockheed Model 13 Electra Jr. with personnel walking around it was staged with a cardboard plane shrouded with fog. Because Bergman was two inches taller than Bogart, he had to stand on blocks or sit on cushions in their scenes together. Several scenes toward the end of the film have dark film noir and expressionistic lighting. Humphrey Bogart's then wife, Mayo Metho, continually accused him of having an affair with Bergman. In fact, Bogart and Bergman hardly spoke to each other. Bogart never says, play it again, Sam. What he really says is, you played it for her, you can play it for me. If she, you can, if she can stand it, I can play it. There were no letters of transit in Vichy France. They are merely a plot device invented by the screenwriter. Any unpleasant characters other than the Nazis were depicted as citizens of other access countries. This is why Ugarte and Ferrari and the dark European pickpocket are all Italians. Casablanca has six quotes on the American Film Institute's all-time list of top movie quotes. Here's looking at you, kid. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Play it again as play as time goes by. Round up the usual suspects. We'll always have Paris. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. In the market scene, as one of the resistance fighters is shot, the wall behind them is painted with a picture of Marshal Pétain and a quote which says in English, I keep my promises, even those of other people. After the beginning of the film, the spinning globe shows three European empires in World War II, the German Third Reich, the Great Japanese Empire, and the British Empire. The Paris train station set was recycled from now Voyager, 1942. Neither Bergman nor Henry wanted to do the movie. She thought the material was sheer fluff and preferred to do for whom the pell tells. She actually did both. Henry didn't want to be second banana to Bogart or Bergman. Even Bogart didn't think much of Casablanca. Orson Welles recounted that Bogart told him, quote, this is the worst picture I've ever been in, quote. Ilsa never tells Victor that she loves him. The closest she comes is when he professes his love for her and she tells him, I know. But she does tell Rick of her love for him. 
The first shot of Rick shows him playing chess, Bogey's favorite pastime. The position on the board is from an actual game he was playing with a friend at the time by correspondence chess, which was very popular. The position on the board is typical of the chess opening known as the French defense. The medals worn by Captain Renault are the Legion of Honor, the 1914-18 International Allied History Medal, and the 1914-28 Commemorative War Medal. Things to look for. Captain Renault's medals, Max Steiner's extraordinary score, several famous quotes, the cardboard plane used in the final departure scene, the dueling anthem scene. Look for film noir and expressionistic style lighting in some scenes. Sidney Greenstreet's white suit. The picture and quote from Pétain on the wall in the market scene. The spinning globe showing the three empires prominent in Europe during World War II. Bogey's ongoing chess game with his friend, showing an opening from the French defense. Now it's time to view Casablanca. Sit back, settle down. Please remember that it may take a few minutes for the film to roll. Enjoy.